and what actually got Adam Starkweather initially started was playing Highway to the Right, the original SPI game. And I looked at it, it was like so cool. You're talking about airborne companies, just like about you know German weapon units and everything like that. I and mean, then I started looking into it, and it was around the time when um, the It Never Snows in September, the book by Robert Kershaw came out. And you're looking at it, and you're looking at his book, and it's showing you well, it looks nothing like the way Highway to the Reich is. So you start digging into it, digging into it, digging into it, and you're like, wait, the Germans look like a complete crap show. It doesn't look nothing like the, the perfectly composed everything. And I think that was kind of my progenitor of like how I got into all order battery research. You start digging, 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 digging. Anyway, so yeah, going back to like it never so is that, that's where I kind of started building up the whole order battle. I initially started with Adam. He kind of took it over when he kind of built out his games. And then I just kind of continued that. Um, and apparently as I've been giving spiels in the past couple of months and years is, you know, because people fall to me, it's like, you know, new books have come out. How come you got the order battle wrong? I'm like, I did that crap back in 2010. Like, Books come out since, and there are better researchers than me. You just got to always look at the new book. So there's the ever uh, ever evolving, um, you know, research. Like new stuff comes always comes out. So uh, it never snows was was my introduction to kind of at least initial research, and then slowly but surely, when Dean was doing more designs and uh, Battalion Combat Series was initially coming out for his works, so I was like, hey, this is a great system. I'm going to get involved. Uh, did a lot of the research for Last Blitzkrieg. And slowly but surely, I'm like, hey, you know, I want to get my own games out. I want to do battles uh, on, you know, what I want to research and, and kind of put out there myself. And that's kind of what started with uh, that. But but uh, for Iron Curtain, the way it came out, I was shooting the shit with Dean. I was like, hey, you know what? It, and it was around the time when all these World War Three games were coming out, right? You talk about Thin Red Line. You talk about, like, you know, the re-releases by Decision and everything like that. And I, I was telling Dean, like, hey, guys are just eating World War Three shit up. Like, but how would I just do one for SES? And, you know, we could put our own spin. We can cover, like, a 50-year period. It'll be different years. And he's like, yeah, do it. I'm like, oh, crap. Now I got to start designing this thing. <laughs> so, but with me, it, it always starts with order battle research, right? You got to, that's for me, the the groundwork, right? You, you figure out the scope of the area you want to play. And it was a lot of similar similarities with the original uh, Victory Games NATO. Like, oh, the footprint was fairly similar. Uh, then you build up the order battles. And I was sort of realizing, hey, look, if I'm going to be doing a 50 year, and I had always intended it to cover from, you know, Penn's wet dream of 1945 and then all the way up to 1989 when the Berlin Wall fell, just defining all ears for that. Uh, then, God, I don't know how long it took, about a year, uh, a bunch of months to do the research and you added in the playtesting and everything and, and that came out. Uh, mind you, that was the first game I had published, but, you know, I had already some other games in the works that I think right around the time uh, Penn's last uh Penn's Last Stand was just coming about all my research for that. Um, and, and honestly, through my background for, for Valley of Tears, I mean, that that thing I started initially looking at back in like 2003, like 20 years ago. So uh, the the bug for research, researching has always kind of been there. And I also even Goose Green too, that, I started that back in like 2002. So it's always Carl, kind of been there. I, I have many, I mean, we've many been hearing questions. about it for a while. Yeah. I have many questions, Carl. I've got questions of um, uh, where do you work? Where do you get your expertise? Uh, Dean Essig, um, um, Cold War, war, hypothetical yeah. situations. So, okay. Um, what do you do for a living, basically? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a director in product management and technology. I've been doing that for a long time, just different industries. Now I'm in telecommunications. Uh, so nothing with like, I'm not some NSA guy or, you know, whatever, you know, you can ask the guys out in the white van parked outside. Right, my house. right, right. Yeah. They don't, they don't know what, they, what I do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But just, just you saying you're not an NSA CIA guy, you are, but let's forget. That, that is what a <laughs> buddy from yeah. the NRO would say. I, I, just, I just know where exactly to look online and, you know, and look in books. That's basically and it. So, yeah, uh, it's all so public. Dean Essig. Um, yeah. how was that guy? How was yeah. he as a person? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, let's I uh, get this out of the way, though, and say our, our best wishes are with Dean yes. for an extremely speedy and efficient recovery. Yeah. So I, what happened? I don't know what happened. 
So yeah. I'll, Dan, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed really quick. Uh, so, God, I think it was about uh, last week he yeah, got into like a car accident. Oh, uh, shit. It, it was. It looked like it was. It was stroke induced. Um, it crashed. Oh, he, he was out for two days. He woke up. His kids were there at the hospital. We we all got the notice. I let like Brian and the rest of the folks at MMP know. So, but I'll, I'll let everyone here know that uh, Dean is back at home. He got discharged. I think about two days ago. Uh, I haven't spoken to him because honestly, I want to give him his time to recover and everything. He does have a fracture, so he was wearing a neck brace. I think the neck brace came out uh, about a day or so ago. And so uh, if you ask me how is he doing right exactly now, I'm not sure. But all the information I'm getting is that he's he's at least at home. So. Oh, wow. I didn't know yeah. that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. no worries. And uh, the but, thing is, what I want to ask about Dean Essig, um, I mean, Dean Essig, as far as I'm concerned, he's one tough guy. Yeah. Period. Yes, he is. You know what I'm saying? I'm just he's Absolutely. one tough guy. You yeah. know. And how is it working with him and uh, talking about issues of battle? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Here's the thing, and I'm not trying to, you know, like sweet talk or anything, but Dean's a great guy to work with. Uh, we have a great rapport uh, together. We have a great working relationship. He has ideas coming in, or you know, he knows like. Order battle research. Screw that. I'm not going to look that up. Carl, you go figure this out. <laughs> um, yeah, and as, mind you, it's not just order battle. He's like, I need a map about this. I need to know, uh, you know, where so and so units. Because if I'm running my place testers, I got to find out if this formation actually went this, you know, here and this far. So I, I go look it up for him. Um, so you know, it's it. I'm just providing raw input, right? I'm, I'm looking up everywhere I can to find these answers to, to these little things he somehow kind of puts it all together and condenses it down into rules right that's effectively what it is um and, and here's the thing like you know when i say I've, I've released all these games out there a lot of it is uh you know they're all based on dean's series rules right because they act as the core they, between scs uh, line of battle uh, bcs and, and others and i'm just kind of building the the design on top of that, off the core. So it's you know, a lot of the a lot of the work designed is is done for me, right? I just got to figure out, hey, what units are out there? What's different? What are the and really what the game specific rules are, are so going to be on he's top of this? He's asking you to do the research. Yeah. So okay, um, no disrespect, uh, mm -hmm. Carl. No disrespect. Does he just go blindly on your take on the research? You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not insulted by that. <laughs> no, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he doesn't look like he suffers fools, that guy. No, no, no. He's, here's the thing. He, he's a smart guy. Um, yeah, he, he'll get stuff up. But he knows, like, because he's also running multiple series, too. He's still doing the artwork for OCS. He's, you know, he is the honcho for uh, line of battle and for, for battalion combat series. So he's got a lot on his plate. So for him to, like, look up stuff is probably like, uh, screw it. I got this guy, Carl. Okay. Oh, go 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 look up the stuff, and then I, I give him all the information. We we collaborate a lot, and then we figure out, and then ultimately what it boils down to. He's like, all right, I got my answer. This is going to be the rules. He, we try it out in the weekly playtest sessions, and and we see if it works or not. So, Carl, wh where do you get your expertise? Honestly, g general curiosity, and uh, just, yeah, yeah, just uh, like if you know. <laughs> The, the the basic answer is I read a lot of books. That's bullshit because you read books. But what I what I do is when I start reading the general histories, right? If I'm if I'm picking up a glance book or I'm picking up, you know, just any general history book, I'm gonna read a line and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. It's talking about this unit's doing something or it's going to this location. I'm like, hmm, all right, let me go look at it. I look on the map. I look at the game map. It's like, oh, how can they get there? Well, what enemy unit was there or how did it get there? And you start asking all these questions, then you start digging, digging, digging. And, and you know, if anyone who reads my blog post, you, you'll see, like, you can kind of see how my brain works a little bit sometimes. So, like, one of the more recent posts was, you know, the next game we're working on is uh, Kalak, which is the, the entryway to Stalingrad. It's like the July 1942 fight before it gets to the urban fight itself. So I got interested in saying, like, well, the Germans did all, you know, you hear all this blitzkrieg stuff that the, the Germans did. They were actually pretty good at because what they would cut their way through they would you know everything you would find stereotypical about blitzkrieg they, they find the weak points punch a hole through it and then like run like hell to the enemy's rear to cut them off so we're trying in the, in the play test game you're like it's how the hell are they doing this so i started looking at one of the panzer divisions there the 16th panzer division i'm like 
Well, as far as I can tell, like only half the guys had fuel to get through there. Started digging, digging, digging. And I realized like, well, you know, I got to get the unit history book. I got to look up other books. Let me look online to see if there's other stuff out there. And you realize, oh, okay, you know, the, the whole division actually was probably fueled up just based on, uh, you know, how they were able to make their progress. I, I got the unit history book, like for 80 bucks. And look at the look, and it had this like situation map just for just for the division, and it's got all these crazy lines, or all their little comp group runner going here, going there, going here. And so when I see that, I'm like, well, you know, how can how can we recreate that in the game? So again, like yeah, to Dan, to answer your question, it's basically just you know, at, find an answer to one thing, it'll raise another question. I just keep digging, 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 digging until I I try to get my answer. And, and um, uh, sorry, Artie, I'm, I've got all these questions. That's okay. Um, um, Carl, um, you were talking about World War Three stuff, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Isn't that outdated right now? Because of <laughs> It is. You know, I'm, know. I'm, I'm serious. No, it, it totally is. It, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, Jesus. I'm, I mean, I'm let's, let's focus on in. China. You know? Glad, well, yeah. yeah. I want to go to that area. No, but you know uh, what I'm saying? It's it's, yeah. it's 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 it hasn't happened. It's gone. It's it's passe, man. But see, that's the th that's that's the weird thing, right? Because you talk about why the all the World War Three games were so hot, right? Like the, the next war, Herman's the next war. Mm -hmm. It was because it was hypothetical, among many it was others. Weird, yeah. yeah, among many others, absolutely. And, and you see it, and then for some reason, past couple of years, it's been it's been hot again. But if you think about it, it was all in the past, so it's like past hypothetical yes. so i so i still kind of see it as historical because really because because here's the thing when when mark herman was doing his design he was doing all his research right mark herman had all the connections in washington and all his his military connections and whatnot yeah so he was trying to say like oh you know what's a what's the future force structure what's the what do the soviets look like and he's trying to all figure it out in his head because it's like almost like real-time intelligence now we have the hindsight of looking back and like hey we know exactly what the soviets look like we know exactly what the thing because all the information is coming out because you know after you know the, the berlin fall down and soviet union crash it's like all the information was made available so when i was able to do the research for iron current it was just looking at it and say like i have all this information that no like all these other guys didn't and i talked to like fabrizio and all the and, and bruce maxwell and all these other guys who did the designs too and they're like yeah it's like it's awesome. We have all this information now, not, not what we had before. Like, you know, even Bruce Maxwell, when we did the new NATO, it's like, he's like, my original design was like, crap. Now, now he finally has an opportunity to, to make his, his new one. Uh, but I mean, he, the, the, <clears throat> Carl, the, the historical aspect of it is only an intelligence. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Nothing happened. That's a lot of speculation, right? I mean, but you, you talk about the new hypothetical stuff, right? Like, yeah, potential war uh, against China in, in Taiwan. Like, right. that, that's all hypothetical right. stuff, right? And yes. you know, I, I've seen videos on that and, and how they they speculate in this and that. But it's it's all, again, it's all speculative. And I, I won't go there. I'll, I'll let the Michelin's of the world take care of that stuff. But it's current right now, the Taiwan... It's you it's, know what I'm it's, saying? Well, yeah, but if you're interested in it, you're interested in it. If you're not, you're not. You're not going to yeah. sign something you're not interested in. Then, then. But it's also, it's also trying to fish, fish around for information, right? I mean, mind you, the, like the the current war in Ukraine. Um, yeah. You know, like I, I'm not going to get into it because I know there's like still hotly debated whether or not there should be games on it or not. But you know, I keep thinking in my head like the the amount of information that's coming out in terms of research uh, order of battle and what actually happened in terms of sequencing of events is a lot faster now than what it had been before. Right? Uh, you talk about like Nick Carp when he built it, when he did uh, Vietnam 1965 to 75. That was only 10 years after the after the Vietnam War ended. But he was able to build something really accurate. But that's still 10 years. Now I know Mark Herman's work on on the you know his his uh, game against uh, Kiev in 2022. Mm -hmm. There's Is a lot more information out there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Based with on David his, Doctor. Uh, right. I think based on the flashpoint coil on this. No, uh, I'm going to botch it. Uh, another one of his systems. But a lot of the information that he's able to get from that research-wise, uh, using OSINT, uh, you know, uh, open source intelligence, is a more easily available these days than it was years ago. Mm. All right, Carl. So I got a good question here for yeah. uh, from Jeff Beeler. Uh, it would, and it's just popping up a lot question. of questions. So, yeah. <laughs> well, this one's not about Canadians, so, yeah. so it's fair game. Uh, 
Wow. So is ha, ha, what was there something that you uncovered during research for a game that that really did surprise you? Oh God. There honestly, there probably are. It's just I, and there's probably a lot that I, I just can't think of any right now. That's okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. John Stanley here. Uh, John Stanley, thanks you, thank you for the support. It is much appreciated. Yeah. Are, are there any battles or campaigns that you think are untouched and and are interesting? I mean, other than maybe uh, Colic that uh i'm not sure we've really seen a game on that campaign specifically to the oh my best God, that's record. large that's large what era well whatever oh, era. yeah oh, oh oh just in terms of the question yeah well yeah any, uh, anytime you know it's uh, some somebody really ought to do a game on and that could well, be you but it doesn't have to be you right yeah i mean a couple. Uh, I mean, well, I did do screen in, in, in Falklands, and I think there was only one Aaliyah magazine game on that, besides the, the Lock and Load and whatnot. That sounds uh, right. So one of the more recent discussions that I had in one of my blogs was like, what, like hey, you know, you got Valley Tears out. It's, it's, it's post-World War II. What, uh, you know, what other post-World War II wars or, or battles can you cover? I'm like, the only other one I could probably think of that covers large enough uh, combined arms, conventional uh and, and you know pretty interesting would be like the 1965 indo uh indo uh pakistani war hmm. um i i think the situation there it's interesting uh it's pretty even-sided the honestly the only downside to that is there's probably just unfortunately not enough interest in it um i, I kind of felt that there was going to be a struggle even trying to get uh valley of tears out on the pre-order and i know already for you it's you're like you always said like middle east i don't know but i'm still going to support it so but there's got to be the balance of hey there's interesting topics out there but it still kind of has to have the selling aspect um but you also have on the flip side too a lot of people saying oh you know world war ii is done to death but again like the next bcs game on Kalak. Has anyone heard of that battle? Does anyone really understand it? Uh, it was a great situation because you, you got the stereotypical Germans and their Panzers running Blitzkrieg stuff. You got like, you know, Soviets who aren't necessarily running around, uh, running away. But it's also not the slog of the Stalingrad urban fight, right? It's mm -hmm. like what everyone and their mother's going to do design on. So it's, there's still segments of areas, even within familiar areas of like World War II, that that can still be be done um and again it's just the aspect of hey if you do the full design of it you put it up in pre-order are people going to be interested enough i mean it's not gonna be like you know crawl phone goes up there so i'm gonna pre-order right away i don't know if there's 550 people that will say that maybe three but you know it, it, it's that balance because you also again like for doing designs play testing development everything uh it takes a long time. So whether or not you want to invest all that time to, to do something that ultimately may not come to fruition is 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 the struggle. So Artie, speaking uh, of a lot of time, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Artie, that, correct me. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Artie, no, go ahead Dan, because I'll remember my question. Yeah, and no, I won't remember mine. Um, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Artie. Is MMP more of an intellectual, grognardy kind of company? Grognardi, I, I mean, I, I'd yeah. say that's fair. That's, you know, intellectual. I don't, really, I don't really talk to those guys. Uh, we're, we're, you know, you know what I, I'm saying. We're, we're all uh, some degree of intellectualness, and probably a position somewhere on a, a spectrum somewhere is probably a prerequisite for for being in this hobby. Um, but MMP, I, you know what I mean? I mean, well, Carl, yeah, you know, but uh, you know, they they. they MMP does a lot of, of the kind of games that I like to play, okay? And just in general, the amount of bizarre satisfaction that I get taking over, it's my turn, it's my movement phase. I'm going through each of the three to 500 OCS counters along the front. And I Jesus. touch every single counter and make sure every single counter is rotated. Oh, my God. Direction. And I mean, I mean, seriously. So... I, I, this is not in it's not a intellectualism is not the right word, but but grog grognardy. I mean, I think it's fair to say MMP is a, a groggy yeah. company. The, the thing is, is that as, as a game designer, and nobody goes into game designing war games to make money. Oh, right? certainly not. <laughs> That's why I got a real sure. job. Yeah. 
But the yeah, thing except, is, that, except David Thompson and Gregory M. Smith, who are trying exactly. to make, make up, the, make up for the poor, uh, the poor hourly rate by volume alone. So, Carl, um, why was your pitch to MMP and not to mm. another company? Uh, Again, not to sound sappy, but because my loyalty to Dean and he built a great yes, system, and I have yes, a great working relationship with him. That's yeah, what I'm you're not going to pitch about. a. You're not going to take a. I, I, I'm guessing that if you submitted an SCS design to GMT, they would be confused. Yeah, uh, I'd be. What? What is? What's going on here? There's some. Uh, I, yeah, no, we're not doing yeah. this. This is I mean, weird. But, but here's the, and like uh, my point before, right? Because the series rules are there. I don't have to think like. How do I write rules for a Zoc? How do I do movement? Like, I'll, I, I'm not that level of a designer. Uh, I don't want to think about that. I want to put, like, give me all the hardcore history stuff. Like, how do I, how do I translate that into counterform and put all that? And I'm just gonna sit it on top of a series rule that someone else created. That's well repeatable and like you know i'm Carl, happy with that probably your your uh, i don't know if you said ezoc or zoc but i mean isn't it standard standardized that if it's so, I, you know, I know some people want to no, zone no, of no, control no, it's zone of control no but some people want to put their spin on it right there's all like kinds what? of there's zoc bonds there's zocs yeah. there's that there's, there's soft zocs there's zones, hard zocs yeah. there's locking zocs what there's different kinds of zocs B bcs has what four or five kinds of zocs yeah. So like engagement what? zones, it's, Zox, yep. it, it's it's two two hexes wide instead of one hex wide. Uh, I've seen that. Uh, what is an air zone of influence in Empire of the Sun? Mm -hmm. If if not a zone of control that does specific things, right? It's the yeah. same basic idea. It's just got a different name. Zox no, oh, in me, to take this at. example in many games, Zox function differently. In a, in an old SPI game, chances are they're going to be hard locking Zox. We're playing Library Napoleonic battles right now, where if you enter an enemy, if you're in a Zox, you can't leave. That's it. Yeah. You're stuck there unless well, you're, you're in a battle. You, well, yeah, you got to fight it out, right? And like, either yeah. get re re retreat the enemy out yeah. uh, by fighting them, or you get retreated out of the hex. Right. But you were talking about air air control in 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 um, an enemy zone of control. I'm talking about air zones of influence in the Empire of the Sun. They function, they are two hex, a two hex radius. They function very much like a zone of control might. Well, Except the, only air units throw them and carry them. Mm. And uh, they can do things like prevent su supply from coming through and all kinds of all kinds, all kinds of interesting things. So I okay, want to get okay. at, speaking okay. on, the, on the topic of, you mm -hmm. know, long development time and, and all the work that it takes that has to go into a game design. Valley of Tears is something that's been in the crock pot for quite a long time, right? So, yep. uh, so tell us about how that got started and then yeah. what changed along the way. Yeah, Valley of Tears was originally an OCS game. And I was originally planning to do a three map thing of the whole Middle East area, you know, revolved around Israel. Um, I think it was like a 2.5 mile scale, you know, on the lower end of the OCS scale. And kind of do it like the old SPI Sinai game, where it covered the multiple wars through that. And I figured, you know, OCS was great, you know, great because you know it would be like battalions or, or brigades for the different sides. You covered multiple wars, uh, and this is before the age of like Adobe Illustrator and everything. So I was like hand drawing the maps on like a hex grid paper and this and that for all that. Um, did that for a couple of years. Did the research, and you know, way back when the only research material you had was a Dupuy's Elusive Victory book, mm -hmm. right? The, the big book that like everyone has. And you're like looking there and you know, I, I just got to the point where I, I was building up counters and everything for it and I was trying it out and just thinking, well, you know what? The Six Day War is like two turns. It's not fun. It's like a, <laughs> that's, that's fair. It's just like the OCS game. It's like, yeah, great. And then you know, <laughs> the airplane is just sitting there just taking it. And he's like, you know, what do I do next? So like, that's not gonna be great and in a similar situation <laughs> for the 1956 war as well so i'm like the only the only possible war you can really cover is the yom kippur war because it's it's pretty balanced uh did that and it was kind of you know i started the design put it off for a while and you know that's why the whole the whole breath of time took about 20 years and then when dean started coming up with uh the concept for battalion combat series he actually asked me he said you know carl if you have all this great material do you think you can convert it over to battalion combat series, which is instead of 2.5 miles per hex to one mile per hex. I was like, 
sure. Yeah, sounds great. And it also gave me the better granularity, right? Because originally for, for OCS, it would be like, you know, the uh, battalion units for Israelis and brigade units for, for the Arabs. But at BCS, everything would just be battalions. And I was like, this is going to be actually really cool because I could show it this granularity. Great that it's going to be four maps, but, you know, I'm going to be able to show the Yom Kippur War just at a level that's like cool. Uh, oh, that I want to show oh, no. Carl, Carl, yeah. if, if you're designing, if you're designing a certain game with a certain scale, mm -hmm. how can you just change it up and not change the whole game? Oh yeah, it, the the because the guts of it were there. Um, so all the input research, right? You talk about the, the order battle, the the initial maps it was based on. You just have to basically scale it up. Or, or I guess in this particular case, scale it down, right? You go down a level, uh, the maps become bigger, more, you're, you know, like one little hex in an OCS is like a, a bunch of hexes within BCS. You just have to get more detailed than that. Uh, you know, one unit in OCS is going to be three units in BCS. You just got to keep drilling down. You got to keep and then translate it to the particular, to the particular series. So what do you do? You break up, uh, you break up the, um, for lack of a better word, you break up the, divisions mm -hmm. to make it more tactical if you're in into town. italians and, yeah and if you're scaling up you're you're, you're going more uh, yep. uh divisions or whatever yeah. but but remember i'm i'm an order battle nerd so like me so you know my whole thing that i, I think i wrote in my designer notes i'm like the fact that i was able to identify every single egyptian battalion like number wise was cool to me I, it might not be cool to anybody else out there but, yeah, but that's, that's large. Cool. oh no my my ocd right? rejoices at your at your discovery no but hold on if you're yeah. talking battalion uh carl isn't that large it's like what thousand guys a thousand or five thousand guys yeah no but five? Like, up yeah. to a thousand guys up to okay okay yeah. so you're getting you're getting i'm getting more granular you're getting yeah. mildly detailed there yeah yes yeah yeah I mean, yeah you see what i'm saying Artie? You see what I'm saying about so, the intellectualism, yeah. about about the the, the 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 MMP stuff. You're breaking it down now. You're breaking it down, and it's mm -hmm. you're going you're going more for the research stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so, it's a nerd. It's a yeah. Nerd. I okay, I mean, I I guess from like uh, I I would kind of bundle that into the groggy. I guess because it's kind of it is kind of an old school way to do it, right? Where you start with the research and you, you build up from right. there, right? Right. And if you have to then pivot at some point in the process, well, you started with the research, but the research all still holds. Maybe you right. don't. Maybe you need to look at it from a different light because you're changing scale or whatever. Exactly. Or if a changing topic, you know, might you might, but but you did the research and and that's still usable, right? So you you were able to fork off from somewhere along the way. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's one thing I always say is that, you know, like, you know, and I kind of even said, like, it, part of Valley of the Tears is also like a research project for me, right? Because mm -hmm. I, like, I tried to jam in as much design notes as possible because, like, all, all this stuff that was in my head for, like, 20 years, like, I want to get it out there. Okay. So all this, Carl all this, re all this initial research stuff from, like, original Hebrew, original Arab sources, like, uh, Middle Eastern experts and everything, I, I wanted to get it on paper. But... I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, you know, have this like little tiny half inch counter and put like as much little tiny information. Oh, there's like, you know, a thousand AK 47s in here. And then like, no one needs to know that ultimately playing it. You just say, there's this guy that I need to move, but just maybe behind the scenes, you kind of know there's a shitload of research that went into figuring that out, that I, you know, made sure I got as much information, right. Cause you know, a, a big premise of mine is basically saying there's always going to be someone out there that's smarter than me that knows more information about me so i don't want to get caught of being like yeah i just kind of half-assed it and just put it out there so i might as well try to put every, every effort in it to kind of figure out uh to get it as right as possible and you know hopefully it almost to the degree of having like peer-reviewed like a phd i, I, uh, I was i was just about to say that so it's not bachelor's level research <laughs> It's no, not, it's worse. You got war gamers speaking at average. Yeah, exactly. And you, you know how uh, war gamers get sometimes, right? Oh, my God. You know, but, but people are impossible is, to deal with. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, so, okay. So, MMP is what? Master's level 
type research. I don't know how you want to quantify it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I mean, I I don't know, man. You got uh, like every other publisher, MMP does a variety of different things. Right, and not everything like their Gettysburg game that they put out in uh, Special Ops uh, six months ago, or whatever it was. Right, I mean that that's not the kind of game. That's the kind of game I think a GMT could have done, uh, frankly, Uh, or or Compass or somebody else. Um, But even but even the the standard combat series, right? Well, that's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you guys are still pounding the research on even on the SCS stuff. Yeah, it's not like it's it's still it's still like games. games. Yeah, you, you just, just said you guys. Together, you said yeah. you guys. The UMMP guys. Yeah, yeah, you guys. I'm glad you said that. Right. So, okay. So, I do have the. So, you know, you're, you're thinking. I, I have helped out others. I, I've actually helped out Adam more recently. I did a little bit of his uh, research uh, recently for his uh, Test of Faith game. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of did the initial uh, help him research there. So, you know, like, again, I, I'm not like MMP like horror uh, you know i'll i'll go around it it's just I, I don't design games from the ground up so i'm not gonna you know farm them out to, to other companies but it, you know usually when people ask me it's like hey i got this question i know you're really good at looking this up or, or mm-hmm. you've done a game on this like they'll they'll just reach out to me and i'm like yeah sure you know yeah. you know, here's what i got or yeah and that's interesting cool. because that is basically the way uh, Bruce Maxwell described uh, your, your uh, help for him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. W- w- for the new NATO, right? Yeah. So, so we, well, was... why, why isn't Bruce that. Maxwell an MMP guy? Uh, I mean, I'm glad Bruce Bruce has come back to the hobby after all this time, yeah. right? Okay, um, because he seems like an intellect, like lots of research, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Well, there's yeah. plenty of people that do lots of research. What, is Mark Herman some kind of dummy? I didn't saying? say, I didn't. I'll, I'm pass, not, I'm not I'll pass that along. Mark, Dan says you're a dummy. So, because you don't work, you don't do enough stuff with MMP. That's, that's going to be the anybody conversation. Anybody can be put in the work. It's just where you're published. Yeah. So where where does the order of battle research start, Carl? Because you're kind uh, of I I feel like you're the and I'm not saying this to suck up, uh, but I'm gonna suck up a little bit. The yeah. I feel like you're the first name that comes to mind in wargaming when it comes to doing order of battle research. Yeah. No shit. Because of the outstanding work you've done on things like holy fuck and, and, and test of faith and iron yeah. curtain. So, so where does one start with that? Let's say somebody says, "I'm going to hire Carl Funk to do my order of battle research because he's the best." Yeah. So, and but he's going to come up with, uh, "All right, I need, I need a seven year war, seven years war order of battle." Oh, my where God. do you start? I, the guy's so young. How, how does that happen? <laughs> he doesn't I even mean, remember the seven years war. I he's mean, so I, young. I, I don't. I was doing acid. This guy wasn't even born. <laughs> You basically, it's all paring down. Uh, it, it's kind of like the, the theme for tonight, right? It's uh, you start with general histories, like granted, seven years where I'm not that familiar with. Um, you, you start with general history books, and then you try to find books that uh, will have the nice little back of the book order of battle that kind of breaks mm-hmm. everything down. But then I'm, I'm going to question that. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Like, honestly, like I'll start with Wikipedia, I'll start there. You go to the Wikipedia and they put all this, you know, information out there. Order a battle for the wilderness. Order a battle for Gettysburg. You look into it and you're like, okay. But then immediately in my head, it clicks in saying, eh, let me let me try to verify that. Let me try to dig into it a little bit. And you start looking, you try to find where the citations are. And you maybe look at those sources. You follow other things. You go to on forums that there's a ton of other guys that are more geeky or nerdier about this stuff or, or more experts about seven years where you just start paring down, paring down, paring down. Um, so, you know, you talk about like World War II order of battle research is kind of formalized, right? Because you had every single division was structured the same. Every single, you know, w- was built this way. So there's a degree of uniformity and, and you got to find a little nuances here and there. The difficulty is when, and to kind of uh, take the story just a little bit, uh, you know, because we're trying to correlate like the seven years research with uh, what I was trying to research for uh, No Turning Back, which is the, the line of battle uh, wilderness game that we're, we're trying to get out. That's harder because when you talk about like pre 20th century research, it, it just, you have regiments and you had X number of guys in that regiment. And it could vary from a hundred guys to a green regiment with a thousand guys. And no order of rooks, uh, books 
will oftentimes give you that unless they actually have like the muscle rolls every single month. Um, I was able to find that for the, for the union, for the Confederates, there's, there was nothing. I, I couldn't find anything. Uh, so again, it's, it's that you build up the curiosity, you start figuring it out. Uh, I found a book uh, by an Alfred Young called, it was like the numerical statistics of the Army of Northern Virginia in the, uh, in the Overland campaign. And, that and sounds it had all, amazing. It, it was for me. It was awesome. It was like this is fantastic. It was just it sounds it's amazing. Just like listening of a brigade and like the number one and of the brigade. See, this, this is what I geek out on. But oh, you know, but the line of battle is is regimental, right? Because that's the one step below brigade. So it had all the figures out there for for brigade. So I'm figuring out, and I and I tried to do some funky math. Uh, <laughs> you know, Get, Gettysburg is there's statistic about everything for Gettysburg, right? It has like that a thousand books on it. It has a book on like the breakdown numbers for each of the individual regiments. Cause they, you know, they got the muster numbers. They figured out how many guys were straggled this and yada, yada, yada. There's so a I book about the... Dan Sickles at <laughs> Gettysburg. There's a, and, there's a book about Dan Sickles leg. Okay. So that's true, <laughs> there's yeah. like a book about everything. Oh, that's insane. And if you really want so, to, you could go visit the leg. Yes, you can. So, it, which is also featured in, in the film uh, Lincoln. Yes. So it's, yeah, the national like medical. Oh, I forget. Yeah, uh, there's like a military hospital that 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 Dan Sickles preserved leg is on display at. I guess yeah. it ain't no difference than going to Italy and and getting a preserved tongue from a from a a, a saint in a certain yeah. Uh, basilica. Yeah, only Sickles Re- ain't no saint. Relics so. of Dan Sickles. <laughs> now, now, uh, Carl, this yeah. brooch contains Dan Sickles' leg. I gotta put yeah. that on a T-shirt now. Just to get, just to get to Canonized. know the man, Carl Fung. Just to get to know the man. Uh, do you have any hobbies besides this? <laughs> yeah, like I mean, <laughs> do you have any hobbies? Like, do you go uh, uh, squirrel hunting <laughs> or? Uh, you know what I'm saying? No, so uh, I'm not so much into it now. Uh, I, I used like to be, garden gnomes. Yeah, no. Uh, I used to be. I used to be into photography a lot. I used to do uh, event like, shooting events, shooting concerts, and stuff like that. Um, but that's kind of been by the the wayside. Now I'm, I'm just glad. a working a working slub with a with a, a couple of young kids. So, I don't, so basically, I don't get to go basically out that much. you're gonna pay you're gonna pay your taxes. You're gonna die, and they're gonna tax yeah. you on your death. Um, yeah. So at uh, concerts, that 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 struck a chord here. Mm-hmm. What concerts did you photograph, Carl? They there was a big event in New York City called CMJ. I think it was called the uh, College Music Jam. Uh, I volunteered to be a photographer there. Um, Who were the bands? That, no, but the thing, a lot of them were like up and coming. Uh, God, they. So one year Phoenix was there and they were they were playing at the Madison Square Garden. I wanted to sneak in, but I couldn't. Uh, but I went to a lot of other a lot of other concerts like all around New York City just to, to photograph them. A couple of them kind of did start releasing albums out uh, that kind of hit a little bit mainstream. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you would know bands I, like one band that I remember is like Screaming Females out of. Uh, out of uh, East Brunswick, out of Jersey, they're they're fantastic. That girl can shred the guitar like crazy. So I, I, mean, I would just be ang- you're pretty got to be pretty angry if you live in New Jersey. Well, um, yes. uh, uh, no, uh, music is my thing. So no, I don't know the screaming females. Uh, I know that band there. What's that band there? Uh, Artie. Uh, down, Bruce down, 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 down. Huh? Bruce Springsteen. No, no, that the female band. Uh, something. I don't called, know. We mentioned uh, New Jersey, so. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. No. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So that that was my hobby, but on, again, not to sound geeky and nerdy, but the stuff that I do for this is pretty much my hobby. Designing so games is it. a hobby. That's yeah. it. You're right. You're yeah. right. You're, you're I'm a, a working. Linear. I'm a working. I work. I'm a working schlub. After I do dinner, get the kids down, uh, I'll just start researching and doing game designs. I mean, yeah. So you're a linear man. So linear. you're helping out with uh, with no turning back, however mm-hmm. that's shaping up, and hopefully yeah. we can get that and on pre order real soon. Still Anytime. scheduled. I, again, last time I spoke with Dean, he was still trying to get the the version three rules out. There were a bunch of edits, so he's still trying to get. It. Again, the plan is still try to get it out of pre order before mm-hmm. end of year. So hopefully, him returning uh, hasn't necessarily set anything back for that. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. So so what what else do you then have in the works? 
Yeah, yeah. So that, and yeah. and the various BCS things that we've heard right. about. Well, you can talk about that too. Actually, I'm sure mm -hmm. not everybody yeah, happens to read the blog. So yeah, they should. Uh, yeah, they should. I mean, most they, of the they concentration. Should. They should. Uh, most of the concentration is on BCS. So uh, the the primary one that's being tested now, and we've mentioned before, is Kalak K A L A C H. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's the battle preceding the urban fight at Stalingrad, July 1942, where the Panzers were trying to sweep up and capture all the Germans before they got to Stalingrad. Apparently that didn't work. Spoiler was alert. That, was that an operation? Uh, yeah, it's, see, that's the thing. It wasn't like, an, it, it was after uh, Case Blue. Uh, you know, Case Blue was like at the very end of July and they're pushing south to, to Stalingrad and ultimately they kind of re-diverted to the oil fields in the south. So this was Paulus, you know, Hitler says, hey, Paulus, go go capture Stalingrad. So Paulus is like, all right, let me do this. I got all my fuel and, and supplies being siphoned off. All right, let me try to do one quick grab, take these two Soviet armies uh, before the before the Don River, sweep, you know, pocket them like the, the, the traditional pocket battles that the Germans would do. And then, great, I could just walk into Stalingrad. Uh, and the Soviets actually stopped them. Uh, but in addition to that, and uh, we're coupling the game. There's that game for the July battle. We're going to couple it in because I realized, like, in the bottom corner of the map, it's the exact same uh, ground that was fought in December 1942 by the Cheer River. That's the whole famous Panzer battles, uh, which we also did an SES game for. So we're actually going to have a, a like a, a quarter map size or I think a half month size uh, battle of the Cheer River battles in uh, December 1942. So we're going to have counters for that and, and fight that battle. Um, so, so that's kind of taking up a lot of the work. Um, Dean's trying to get ahead. Uh, you know what? Bit of spoiler alert. Uh, Dean's trying to get ahead, was trying to get ahead of it for Winter Friends. But I think he's looking to try to bring another BCS game out there uh, on Gela, uh, which is the, mm. the Italian German counterattack uh, okay, you, you know you know what I'm talking about. It was on uh, Sicily, damn. Yeah, in like Sicily. It. Yeah, like right in the initial days, Allies landed, and the Italians counterattacked, and the the Uber elite, you know, Hermann Goering division with Tiger tanks and everything counterattacked. So, it, it's that's going to be uh, we're going to build that into a format like Aircourt, where it's going to be a single map, uh, bigger counters. Uh, it's going to be shorter game. I mean, honestly, it's going to be like a three turn game What's because counterattack was like Gala. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the scale. Yeah, battalion. One about one mile a hex, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do this as uh, like a uh, kilometer. It's fits in one map. It's only a couple of formations. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good introduction. Uh, we've kind of just got the ground off running on it. Dean has like a couple of draft rolls, uh, and I think he's looking to kind of try it out at uh, Winter Offensive. You know, um, at at that scale, you said a mile a hex. Mm -hmm. A kilometer pretty, to a mile, yeah. Yeah, we're getting pretty tactical at that at that yeah. point. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's the that's the grand tactical that everyone keeps talking about, right? That scale right below platoon and everything like that to to regiments. But Bat battalion is interesting, and, and there's a couple of systems that that do it in, in varying degrees. So you know detail. what, Carl? I mean, um, what's that guy's name? Um, Richard Berg, mm -hmm. right? Um, he always who's that guy? Yeah. Yeah, he always <clears> put <throat> in little, little funny tidbits like, I, yeah. yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. So Adela, Adela, yeah. what about the cannoli? <laughs> okay. Okay. One of our, man. one of our local guys just, uh, just uh, did some kind of deal for a, a whole stack of uh, issues of Berg's review of games. Uh huh. And just glancing through that is an absolute riot. Just like that's a riot. Go, I'm sure the, the longest day comes out. It's ah, more <laughs> like the longest hernia. So it's just just fantastic. I mean, we really he missed, was opinionated. We really missed yes, he the, was. that tone here in War Gaming. Let me tell you. Well, what Berg's whole thing was supposedly that he would try to sneak in something onto his map, so that he, it was either like an inside joke. Or it was to say, hey, if you copy my map, I know you're freaking, you know, copying me because I put <laughs> right. in some like stupid little thing in there. And it's it's <clears> funny <throat> because um, I once spoke to uh, um, unconditional surrender designer. What's his name? Salvasta. Oh. Salvasta. Salvasta. Yeah. And he mm -hmm. put in his town that had nothing to do with nothing, but he said, hey, yeah. it's my design, 
That's my top. That's funny. Yeah, no, you, know, you got to put your, you got to put your. No, nah, it's cool. That's cool. That's so cool. <laughs> and the thing, and 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 Carl, um, you were you if you were to design a game, it's up to you. You are the guy. What's the game? Oh God. What's the game, Carl? Well, it's even okay, better so... if you can get somebody else to do the work for you, though, isn't no, it? No, no, no. It's all Carl. It's Carl. Well, okay, so and I guess speaking in, in line already with you, you're asking before for all the games that were kind of in the works. So the long-term stuff, and, and mind you, my primary focus right now is like I I love BCS, uh, I love of this series. I'll keep designing it because it's it's my you know the the the, the series is great, the, the scale is great, it's everything there. And so the game that I really want to get out. Um, which I'm hoping to, to submit to Dean relatively soon is uh, the uh, France 1940, uh, but it's not like the full thing. It's not like the Simonich one where he's kind of covering like that aspect. But this. Oh no, has, Carl! I'll take that. That's but, fine. Yeah. How many? How many table spacing maps you got? Oh, I, I'll uh, make it work. But like a France 1940 at battalion scales is something I really do because it's really cool. Because what I'm doing is I, I have this very sliver of a map. It's basically like two maps and ten like this. Uh, and it's covering the whole Moose River, right? Because it was the fight toward the Moose River. And then basically at Sedan, the Germans cross and like apparently it was all like done for. But that's, a, you know, the problem is everyone figures, oh, you know, as soon as the Germans get up to to the Moose River and they cross Sedan, it's, it's game over, man. That kind of deal. But I think what that's one unknown aspect for the battle is that the, the two armies were coming together, right? You hear about the Germans always coming through the Ardennes on the one side. But the French themselves were coming with their own reinforcements. They had a, a couple of uh, static and a couple of Series B, like o older guys along the Meuse River. So they had their better divisions. Old men forward. wielding baguettes. Exactly. But they had their better soldiers coming, re coming you know, from the Paris area, basically, coming to meet in the middle along the Meuse River. So the, the, the battle is to focus on when those two armies join it in the middle at the Meuse, like who's going to win out? So I, I always kind of saw it as it's not a guarantee that the Germans are going to win. If they do get to the Meuse River and fight their asses off, and a, there was a lot of, honestly, like luck involved. The Frenchmen? Uh, them crossing, the, Fr the, uh, the Germans crossing and the French preventing them. Right. That there, there's a fight. I mean, the the it's not a guarantee. Uh, the other thing, too, it's since it's focusing all along the Meuse River, it's not just Sedan. It's Dinan. It's uh, the Belgian planes up up at north, which is the big tank battle uh, earlier on, Hanou uh, and Gamblo. And also there was another crossing at, at Mont Therme that was not as contested because uh, there were a bunch of French fortress guys there and it wasn't contested. But it was a tough fight because it was like a big windy turn in the river. Uh, it was really, you know, really mountainy. But one panzer division kind of slipped through and got through. But again, like all the focus on all the books is about Sedan. And then stone and everything there, and it's just like it all kind of clumped up in front of the Three. But the crossing at Montherm, it was kind of got broke a lot of the French's back because as soon as one Panzer division got through, there weren't enough French reserves to kind of block everything off because they siphoned everything off to Dinan and, and Sedan. So, it, you know, in, in fighting this battle, if you get that whole chunk at that battalion scale, at that you know one kilometer ish. That thing you'll be able to fight these little tactic battles and say like it's not a guarantee that that the, that the Germans are going to cross that Sedan. They're going to maybe be able to cross over at uh, you know Rommel in, in uh, Dinan first. So it, that I want to I want to see. It's uh, it's only two maps, but there's like forty formations, so it's pretty hey, big. I'll buy it. So I'm not, hey, there I'm, you go. I'm not up to my uh, World War Two geography on mm -hmm. that. And the, where was the Maginot Line there? Oh, that's the whole thing. Yeah, imagine the line was all south of that. So that's why all the French had to had all their mobile stuff. Those sneaky Germans, they went around yeah. it again. <laughs> but that was part of the whole plan. Everyone said, like, oh, you know, the French spent all their time with the Magellan. Yeah, because it was holding line. Then he put all their good stuff there. Yeah, Jeff Baylor, thanks for the uh, support. I do want to get to uh, Aaron. Jeff always, by the way, Jeff always mentions that battle, too. Yeah, I, I honestly have looked at it because you, you've kind of mentioned that before. It's so. almost as though we're, as though yeah. we're Canadians there. Um, so, uh, what, what are the changes to the order battle in Ardennes too, actually? Cause I know it's been updated. So yeah. Uh, right. Talk about that, uh, just a bit. Yeah. So, 
uh, in case it hasn't kind of known, the Ardennes 2 for SCF that came out was leveraged a lot from last Blitzkrieg, the, B the BCS game. Uh, the map was almost like, you know, shrunken down from the scale of one kilometer to it's one It's a significantly mile. changed game from the previous game Ardennes. Yes, game. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and mind you, I, I know it was one of Dean's early reference for Ardennes and it was, it was a fun oh, game. Sure. It was a fun game, but just did it play like the Ardennes? Because I remember these little clumps of like stranger guys running across the single road and everything like that. Um, but the change to the order of battle is, uh, well, that's my imprint on it. Uh, it. It's more reflective of of their uh, of their actual structure. Um, one big pet peeve I have is with things like the American Independent Tank and Tank Destroyer Battalions, right? They in a lot of games, you see it in Ardennes too. You see it in uh, even like a time for Trumpets and this and that, right? They always show them as, hey, you know, this 745th tank battalion is this unit attached to the, you know, whatever first infantry division. Um, and, and you're seeing it's a whole unit, but the problem is the tank battalion never fought as a whole battalion. So you have this like insanely high attack value unit running around acting like it's a big tank division what uh, a tank battalion as a whole when it never wasn't so th the real change here when what he did for uh the ardennes 2 order battle is to say you know what? i'm gonna bleed all that down i'm gonna subsume all these tanks that were kind of broken up into the into the battalions themselves in lat spitzkrieg themselves since it already has kind of the built-in uh support Mm -hmm. units you you have the unit but you are never running around with a whole tank battalion to use it's kind of like uh, spread across where you get you know the armor value uh there it, it didn't translate directly to to ses so there i just kind of had to say you know what to all the fans of of you know armor warfare and this and that you, you're unfortunately not going to see these individual uh like american tank battalions or, or tank destroyer battalions you, you, you're gonna just get the um uh, infantry units with a, the subsumed support that they have within it. Um, so that's why it's going to play a little differently there. Carl, I'm going to ask a very ignorant and newbie, a newbie question. Oh, trust me, it'll be ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> a noob question here. When you talk about order of battle, how does mm -hmm. that affect the game play? Well, it's the pieces you have to play with reductively, right? <laughs> but, I understand, but, but then the, those I, are I, the I, pieces. I agree, yeah, but it's a, okay. And again, like that... Granted, I've I've been faulted as saying you, you know you spend too much time looking at the order of battle. Who cares as long as the battle plays out the the historical like? But I'm like, yeah, but the game's not going to play historical unless you actually know what actual forces were doing what at mm -hmm, what time, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so so basically, you're saying the order of battle. You're you're talking about all the units involved in correct. that battle. Yeah. Okay, uh, you know uh, the uh, order uh, of battle. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, but 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 not so much the. Hey, I'm going to find the little platoon in here that did all this. Y you do it at the right scale. You do it like battalion combat series is that, right? In, in Ardennes 2 for SCS, we kind of did a bit of a hybrid, to be honest, just to kind of reduce the, the counter count uh, of having like two units, like, you know, uh, reinforced battalions per regiment when an American regiment had three. But it, it's making sure that it represents how the unit actually was. Because I think part of the problem is when people look, you know, they, they open up a book, they go to the back of the appendix and they see the back of the book uh, order battle or they go to the Wikipedia and they write, oh, so-and-so units uh, had this, 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 and this. And, and they start writing it all out. And that's kind of exposes the problem of these little independent uh, American tank battalions and tank destroyer battalions that are just running around destroying everything when they really shouldn't because there's only like five Shermans to uh, supporting an American company. So it, it, the, the, it has to be... The order battle has to be represented correctly. Yeah, but what do you mean about independent? What's a rogue units? No, they're just <laughs> no, not they're, attached to. So you've got not, a game. Yeah. You've got a game system that has formations that are made up of units, and in BCS's case, the formations will typically be regiments or battalions or combat commands or whatever they are. An independent unit is just not attached to any of those. Right. That that's it. So basically, it's a lost unit trying to find no, their own company. Uh, no, they got stuff to do. No, I mean, all right, if I'm going to take that metaphor, they, they are kind of like orphans and then they get a uh, foster formation. <laughs> it's, it sounds like a movie thing. Hey, what, what's your company? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. 
That's fair. All right. So uh, oh, one last question. What came first? Thank you, Greg Grant, for the question. Uh, were oh. you first interested in military history or did you enter that through gaming? No, military history. I probably entered it through. It's hard to say for me. Yeah. No, I, for me, it was definitely military history. Yeah. You know, watching more war, war movies growing up as a kid mm-hmm. and this and that. And it's cool. And then, uh, I mean, if you want me to hear how I got into war gaming, it was in high school. Uh, I did social studies club and they had access and allies. I'm like, this is cool. You can play no World way. War II in a game. <laughs> That it's a great uh, it's a great entry to war games for many I, many teenagers actually. Yeah. I I just bought uh, Access and Allies the the Milton Bradley edition used on eBay because I, I want to get my son into into it. So I was like, okay. it, it was, okay. great. There's also nostalgia is crap for me. Okay, Carl. So you bought you bought Access and Allies to get your son into the game. Isn't there another because that that that's very general. That's very risk. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's very risk like. Um, wh- why didn't you go a little bit more detailed than than Axis and Out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my, my my son's seven, so <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> and still drive. Because you know, I'll, I'll get all, I get all the games in the mail, and like he opens them up, and he's looking, at it, he's like, Dad, can we like, can you teach me this game? I'm like, maybe in like a couple That's of years, so cool. like. Yeah. That's so cool. It's blue when he's 18. How about yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For your 18th birthday, I'm gonna yeah. Here's, here's your case blue. You've great. You're exactly. a, you're a man now. Here's your case blue. <laughs> you're a here's man. Here's a pack of smokes now. in case blue. Go smoke up, kid. Go play. That's, That's so cool. fantastic. Carl, I feel like I could badger you with similar questions oh my God. for at least another two hours, but we are out of time. Um, so we are gonna wrap this up. Um, so wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. all right, make it fast. Oh. Cons, cons. What cons do you go oh, to? God. If you do are you going to be at Winter Offensive? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, Pete Bartlett asked me, you know, especially with I got like work schedule. Uh, I got kids. The wife was going to give me shit about it, so uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to go. Ah, so my, cons, yeah, God. I know. The well, last Carl, time, I think, honestly, the appreciate... last time I think you called me out of the con was years ago. <laughs> You're a broken man, Carl. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you making time in your in your busy home life for this show. So thank you very much. Thanks a great deal for coming Thanks. on. It's been great. Thank you very I, much. This has your been really patience fun. is appreciate appreciated. It. Everybody, your patience at the technical snafu that we had uh, off the air is also appreciated. And Carl's infinite patience at dealing with Dan's bullshit is also <laughs> appreciated. So everybody have a great night. We'll see you next week. Carl, don't take off quite yet. <laughs> Big move.